Okay, what is up there YouTube? This is a J Man Time and today I have a video on some rare North Vietnamese or North Viet men improvised or made and designed anti-tank rocket launchers and recoilless rifles of the First Indochina War of 1946 through 1954. One of the least talked about conflicts in Southeast Asia was the French Indochina War. Following the defeat of Japan at the end of World War II, Indochina was handed back to both the French and the British forces at the end of the Second World War. During the Second World War, the American OSS or the US backed forces had armed a variety of different Vietnamese anti-Japanese resistance forces or insurgent groups. And one of these was the Viet Minh, or the National Liberation Front for Vietnam, which was led by Ho Chi Minh. And when the French tried to re-enter Indochina in 1946, they sparked a war between the Viet Minh and the French colonial forces based in Indochina, and this would be known as the First Indochina War, or the French Indochina War. During the French Indochina War, the French forces mostly used a variety of different French, American, and even old World War II vintage German weapons, while the Viet Minh relied mostly on captured weapons or weapons imported from China, and this included anti-tank weapons. But during the First Indochina War, the Viet Minh did develop some of their own homemade rocket launchers and recoilless weapons for use as anti-tank weapons against the French forces. And most of these were designed by one man, a Vietnamese rocket scientist by the name of Trang Dai Nia, who was a Vietnamese rocket scientist born in 1913 and died in 1997. And during the French Indochina War, he developed Vietnam's first generation of anti-tank rocket launchers and recoilless weapons that were used by the North Viet Minh forces and their allies fighting against the French colonial forces in Vietnam and Indochina as a whole. So let's go over some of these rare recoilless weapons and anti-tank rocket launchers from the first Indochina War. And the first weapon designed by Mr. Tran Dai Nia was the Don Bazooka. The Don Bazooka or the Dan Bazooka was a Vietnamese copy or attempt at copying the American M1A1 bazooka being used by the French forces in Indochina. And this weapon system was developed in the first year of the conflict in 1946 and entered service with the North Vietnam in 1947 and continued to be used all the way up until about 1964 during the early stages of the Second Indochina War or the Vietnam War between North Vietnam and the U.S. and the South Vietnamese Armed Forces. Now this Don Bazooka was chambered for the 36 to 40 millimeter anti-tank rocket which was based on the American Bazooka rocket and had the same armor penetration of about 70 to 76 millimeters. The entire system weighed about 18 to 20 pounds and the rocket launcher had a range of just 120 yards but they were used extensively against French tanks during the Indochina War. Keep in mind, the French were using a mixture of French, American, and even some old German World War II tanks, like the American M24 Chaffee light tank, the American M3 and M5 Stewart light tanks, and they were also using even some German Panther tanks that were taken during the end of the fighting in Europe in 1944 and 1945. And these vehicles had pretty thin armor with the exception of the Panther, so a bazooka could penetrate the armor of just about most of the French light and medium tanks being used in the First Indochina War, with the exception of those heavily armored Panther tanks. Later on, the Vietnamese would adopt a anti-tank recoilless weapon known as the Dai Nia SS, recall this gun, or just the SS recall this gun for short. And this was a 40 to 60 millimeter recallless anti-tank ro rocket launcher developed in 1947 through 1948. And a few thousand of these were made by the North Viet Minh forces during the French Indochina War. Now these were pretty much like the Viet Minh equivalent of the Russian SPG-9 
which was a Russian that recalled this weapon, later sold to Vietnam in the 1950s and used during the Vietnam War of 1963 through 1975, or the Second Indochina War. Well, this version here, this weapon here, the SS recallless gun, was like a primitive version of that gun, except it was much smaller. They came in a variety of different sizes and calibers, from 40 millimeters to 60 millimeters, and there were even some versions that were all the way up to 120 to 185 millimeters. The entire system weighed just 72 pounds, and the recoilless rockets had a range of 4 kilometers or 2.4 miles, and they could penetrate at least 50 to 60 millimeters of armor. These were used extensively during the French Indochina War until the North Viet men got their hands on Chinese and Soviet made anti tank rocket launchers towards the very end of the French Indochina War. There was also another version of this recoilless gun known as the SKZ 60, and this was a simpler version of the same gun, and it also fired the same ammunition, either the 40 to 60 millimeter recoilless round or the 120 to 185 millimeter um, variant. But this version was a simpler version, and there were even very tiny versions of this gun used during the Indochina War. It could also fire a Vietnamese uh, recoilless rifle variant of the bazooka round. They took the bazooka rocket launcher and made a recoilless launched shell version of that 30 to 60 millimeter caliber anti-tank rocket. So this is the old bazooka rocket from World War II, but it could be fired from a recoilless gun. And then there was also an enlarged version. The enlarged version had a 120 to 185 millimeter shell, but the gun was much shorter. There was also an even larger version that was a 185 millimeter version, but this one was very strange. This smaller version, I would say, this shorter version was more like a spigot mortar type recoilless gun. And this one first appeared also in 1948. It was more of a limited production version when compared to the first three versions of the SKZ-60 recoilless system. The gun still had a range of 4 kilometers or 2.4 miles, but the armor penetration is unknown. And it was also used as a light mortar or spigot mortar system as it fired both anti-tank spigot recoilless rounds, but could also fire standard mortar shells, or I guess Vietnamese type of mortar shells. So this one here is pretty strange. There was also a improved version of the SKZ known as the Chuyan It Bet 42 SKZ recoilless gun, and this one appeared in around 1949. It had a different type of warhead that was very similar to the Russian RPG-1. The Russian RPG-1 was the first Russian rocket launcher or anti-tank rocket launcher slash recoilless gun. And that gun fired a 70mm anti-tank round that would become the first version of the same anti-tank recoilless rocket later developed for the RPG-2 and later the RPG-7. Well, this Chion Ebet 42 SKZ fired a similarly looking round, or a very similar round in terms of appearance, but could also fire the RPG-2 rockets. These guns could also fire the RPG-2 rockets that were later supplied to North Vietnam later on towards the very end of the First Indochina War. The weapon had a range of anywhere from 250 feet all the way up to 4 kilometers or 2.4 miles depending on the ammunition used in this Chiyan Ebet 42 SKZ recoilless gun from 1949. There was an even larger version. This was a large muzzle-loading recoilless gun, and this weapon system doesn't have any name that I can find, but it does appear in some photographs from the Indochina War. This was a very rare, large caliber. It must have been at least a 200 millimeters, um, a 200 millimeter recoilless gun that appeared sometime between 1949 and 1950. This gun, just like the other ones, was a muzzle-loading recoilless gun, Unlike most recoilless guns you see being used by the Western forces at this time, like the American M18 and American M20 recoilless guns, which were all breech-loading. So most of the Vietnamese, I guess, indigenous recoilless guns 
were all muzzle loading, very similar to what the Russians would do with their own recoilless guns, like the RPG-2 and the RPG-7, which would become the standard anti-tank rocket launchers and recoilless guns of the North Vietnamese during the post-Indochina War years of 1955 through 1963, just at the start of the Second Indochina War, or the Vietnam War as we in the U.S. call it. And so there you have it. These were some of the rare Vietnamese anti-tank rocket launchers and recoilless guns that were developed in Vietnam during the French Indochina War of 1946 through 1954. What do you think of these weapon systems? Please tell me in the comment section below. And until next time, this was J-Man Time, signing off.